Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead and all the brethren which are with me into the churches of Galatia grace be to you peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world are you not thankful tonight that one day Jesus is going to get us out of this place yes. praise God out of this evil world according to the will of God and our Father to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. In verse 6 it says, I marvel not that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. You know, Paul warned all through the scriptures and other, other uh, people in the Bible warned of the false teachers, the false religions, the false doctrines that were there and they're growing there more and more and more now than they've ever been. I marvel that you are so soon removed from Him that called you into the grace of Christ, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ, which is not. The only real gospel, the only true gospel is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul said, preach Christ crucified. That's the gospel. Uh, we just went through the Easter season, a Resurrection Sunday. We're going through that now. Uh, without the death and the burial of the resurrection, we have no hope. The Bible says it all be vain to preach it. Our faith, it all be a lie. Our faith, our hope, everything stands on the death, the burial, and the resurrection. That's the gospel in a nutshell, right there. Uh, yeah, they, and the Bible says. That ye must be born again. A lot of people don't understand. How are you going to be born again? Nicodemus told Jesus, How can I go with my mother and be born again? He said, It's a spiritual, it's of the Spirit. You got to be born of the Spirit. A lot of people don't understand that. A lot of 
religions, a lot of teachers, a lot of preachers preach a different gospel that you don't have to. That's what I want to talk about today. The false teachers, the false religions that people are eating it up, they're giving their money. I mean, it's a money thing, and we know that. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. It went dead on me. We'll be all right. I'll talk about it right over here. How about that? A bunny died. Well, I can go back. There's so many people teaching false religion, and so many people fall for them. They fall for that. that that's why those mega churches that teach the false religions are so full of people, and the pastors are multi-millionaires living in big mansions and uh, all those things that's going on. But the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the doctrine of Jesus Christ, that you must be born again. You have to be born of the Spirit to get into heaven. That's what he said. Believe that God sent His Son. He sent His Son. The Bible tells us that His only beloved Son, He sent Him by way of a virgin. By Virgin Mary. By Mother Mary. He came. He was born. He did all the miracles. He was God right here on earth in human form. He did all those things. He went and gave His life on the cross. Our substitute for our sins. He was sinless. Not for His sins, but our sins. Died on the old rugged cross. And on the third day, just like God said He would, He raised Him right back up. Amen. He lived forevermore. That's the gospel. That's the doctrine. Anything outside of that's a lie. It's deceived. Uh, he was buried in the tomb and He came back. He's Lord of Lord, King of Kings. And He always will be. He always has been. Amen. If you believe that, and the Bible tells you if you believe that in your heart, not in your head, one of my things is getting it from your head to your heart. It don't matter what you believe up here because it says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Christ died and was raised on the third day, that God will save you if you ask Him. Uh, He'll forgive you of your sin, but you must repent. See, a lot of preachers don't preach repentance no more. We was talking about the blood the other day. Some of them call that slaughterhouse religion now. They say talking about blood in church offends people. Don't say that. People get sick on their stomach. I'll never get sick about the blood of Jesus Christ because if I His blood, I wouldn't be here today. But you repent. You turn from the world. It says repent, be baptized, and you shall receive the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. That's the only way to do that. You'll be born into the family of God. You'll be an heir to the throne with Jesus Christ. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Anything else outside that is a lie. They say there's other ways. There's other ways to get to heaven. A lot of people believe that. They think they can do real good. It's like taking a scale. If the good outweighs the bad, you're going to heaven. That's a lie straight out of hell. It don't matter how good you are. If you're not born again, according to the gospel of Jesus Christ, you won't go to heaven. Uh, anybody that teaches anything any other way, it's a lie. They're a liar, and it's a lie they're teaching you. There's some that uh, says in that verse, there's some that trouble you and pervert or change the gospel. See, a lot of people won't change the Bible to make it fit the way they live. And a lot of these churches, a lot of these teachers change the Bible to make the congregation feel happy. They, they water it down, they tickle their ears. The Bible says that'll happen in the end times. They want everybody to come to their church and come be part of them. They want their money. They want their money. The prosperity preachers and all that preach all this stuff, they're the ones that's got the big fine houses, wear the big fine clothes, drive the big fancy cars. They in it for the money. They're not in it for the souls. Uh, God blesses the preacher. He blesses me. If I had a million dollars, there'd be a lot of hungry people fed today. I can tell you that. It wouldn't be in my house or my car. But there's some that trouble. They pervert it. Some of them say, I believe it all but the virgin. I, 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 I don't believe that. There's preachers that say that. There's teachers in seminaries that say that. They don't believe the virgin birth. And you either believe it all or you don't believe it. Amen. Amen. Uh, but they say, I go, I, I go along with all of it, that virgin birth. There ain't no way that could happen. I don't know if any of y'all ever heard of B.R. Lincoln, an old preacher who's been dead for years. I heard him preach that one time. He said, 
he was one of them that I loved to hear him because he, he knew the word of God and he wasn't afraid to preach. He started out riding mules in the mountain preaching, the old trailblazer. But he said, somebody told him, said, I believe it all but the virgin. He said, Preacher Lincoln, you really can't believe that, can you? He said, let me take you over to Genesis. There wasn't a man or woman either one now when he created Adam. You take that then and see what you can believe. But the birth, the virgin, and then there's some say he was a prophet. You know, there's, there's religions out here that say Jesus was a prophet. They don't say he was the Savior. They don't say he was God. He was a prophet. People believe it. The churches are full. Them churches work. They do. They don't believe he was God in flesh. Some of them don't believe he died on the cross. You know, all the way from the beginning, they said he was unconscious and he just come back to you. I believe he was dead. Graveyard dead. The Bible says he was. Some say he didn't die. Some say he's still dead and he never come back. That they took him and hit him. And these people teach us this stuff. And these people believe it. And a lot of people say you can't save you. You've got to do it on your own. That's one of the big things, churches that believe in works. You've got to work your way to heaven. I don't work to get to heaven. I work because I'm saved. I do what I yeah. do for Jesus Christ because what He done for me. Yeah. If you're truly saved, you'll want to serve Jesus Christ. You'll want to serve. He was a servant. He came to serve. He, you know what he done before he died? He had dinner with the disciples. He went and washed their feet. He was as low as you could go. He was a humble. He was a homeless man. You know they went. They said we want to come follow you and stay with you. He said you don't know what you're talking about. I'm just paraphrasing all this. He said, the birds have nests, the foxes have holes, the son of man don't even have anywhere to lay his head. You don't want to come live with me. He was a homeless man. Terry's got, Terry's got a song he's working. He's been wanting to sing it for a while. He may have to sing it after a while if he come out of him. Everything was barred but the cross. It was his cross to die on. The tomb was barred, everything. He didn't have nothing. You know, one of the things that trouble that may be why God put this on my heart. I want to help y'all tonight. But Russell and I, we talk, and other people, we talk about different things. And, and I hear stories, and, and I read, and I, you know, I, I'm not judging preachers and pastors. I'm not judging them. That's God's deal. But when you live in a $5 million house, and you drive big phone cars and you wear $500 pair of shoes and all that, you say you're a Christ like you're a preacher? That's a lie. Amen. That's a lie. Christ wasn't like that. I, you know, we all fall short. We all do different things. I'm not judging people to do that. But there's a lot of them do it. But what they teach, what they teach, you know, a lot of churches, I, I'm going to be honest with you all tonight as a preacher. I'm against alcohol. I think it's wrong to drink alcohol, period. I'm against it 100%. Y'all may drink. I don't know. I'm not picking on you. I'll tell you what thus saith the Lord about it. I think it's wrong. But you got pastors in churches, they preach in the false religion because they won't preach on it because half the church drinks and they don't want to run them off. They know they'll quit or they'll get rid of their preacher if they go to preaching. You got preachers saying homosexuality is okay and it's wrong according to the Bible. It's wrong. It's a sin. But they're saying it's okay. They don't want to offend nobody. That's watered down doctrine. That's not the gospel. That's not what Jesus told us. And you have those that don't believe it. You have to be obedient. A lot of them don't believe what the Bible says. And you got what I'm going. You got preachers that, well, you don't have to. That's the Old Testament. You don't have to do that. You know, if you lie a little bit, everybody lies a little bit. Lie is a sin. The Bible says it is. You know, you got people that they, they got a good business and, and they're crooked in the business and they do things crooked and they're in the church and they give a lot of money to the church and the preacher don't want to say, well, that's stealing. That's, that's, stealing's a sin. Amen. Drinking's a sin. A drunk's a sin. Yeah. Homosexuality's a sin. Lying's a sin. All this stuff. And if you change it and water it down, you're preaching a false religion, a false doctrine. It's not true. Uh, you do, they do. They want to. They want to make the Bible fit what they do. They want it to fit the church what the church does. They want everybody to be happy. Everybody's got to be happy. My my desire in here is for everybody in this room to be happy. 
I put up a thing, I'll get it hot, I'll get it cold, I'll get you a blanket. I'll do anything I can to try to please everybody. I'm going to please God. Amen. When it comes to my preaching, I'm going to preach what's in God's book, what does say the Lord, what He tells me to preach. If it bothers you, that's your problem because you ain't right. Because what I'm telling you is the truth. Other religions don't do that. They want you to be there. But they change the do's and the don'ts. The Bible says you can do certain things, but you don't do certain things. They change it around to fit their lifestyle. Well, you know, that's, that's a thousand years ago. It ain't like that now. It's the same. This, this right here, God's Word has never changed. It never will change. He's never changed, and He never will change. Amen. The Bible tells us that He's the same today, forever, and tomorrow, and forevermore. They change the do's and the don'ts. They're false teachers. We're not only to believe God's Word, but we're to do God's Word. The Bible says, Be ye not hearers only, but doers of God's Word. Uh, anybody that's teaching and preaching saying, you don't have to do all that, is telling you a lie. Telling you a lie. We're to strive to be like Jesus Christ. Verses 8 and 9 <laughs> says, uh, But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel, any other gospel, Unto you that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Preach anything else but the gospel of Jesus Christ, let him be accursed. That's what Paul said. And he goes on in verse 9. He said, when you're reading this letter, it says, Though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And as we said before, he said, listen up. I done said this one time. So I say now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you that ye have received, let him be accursed. Let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please man, I should not be the servant of Christ. If I come in here and I say homosexuality is okay, <laughs> I wouldn't be serving Christ, I'd be serving Satan. If I said being a drunk was okay, I'd be serving Satan. I wouldn't be serving Christ. That's not what God tells us. Right. He says, Am I do I seek to please men? You know, being the preacher, I'll have enemies. Y'all love me and I know that. Sometimes I preach and I look out there at child and I think, it's hard to look at y'all and tell you all this stuff. God told it to me first. He, he whoops me pretty good. I'm just like y'all. I'm growing and learning every day, every time I read this book. God's teaching me. And He's giving me messages to teach y'all, to help us all. But to persuade man of God, I'm going to please God. I want to please God. I want all y'all to be happy. I want to please y'all. But if I make y'all mad or y'all don't agree with what's in this book when I'm preaching or teaching, I'm going to please God. In verse 11, he says, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached to me is not after man. Not after man. I didn't get it from men. I didn't get it from books. I didn't get it from the internet. And he goes on to tell us in verse 12, For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus gave Paul what he preached, what he taught. I do that. I, I've got all kinds of books in there. i got all kinds of things. I can go down and get a sermon and get up here and just tell you what it says. And it may be great sermons that other preachers preach, but if God's not in it, it's not going to help me or you either one. Amen. I listen to what yeah. God says to do. I don't do it for man. And what I preach to y'all comes from Jesus Christ. Uh, so how do we know if we hear a false teaching? That's what I want you to understand tonight. How do we know? If you sit at home, you turn the TV on, you turn the radio, you go to a meeting somewhere and a preacher or a teacher gets up with the Bible and starts teaching. How do you know if it's real or not? How do you know? Yes, sir. If you know the Word of God, you'll know if they're lying to you. Right. Right. If you know the Word of God, you'll know if it's false. If you're born again, you got a Holy Spirit living in you. And that Holy Spirit's what teaches you. And that Holy Spirit will tell you real quick so when somebody... If, you, if you're filled with the Spirit, you're walking with God, if you're in a, a, a meeting somewhere and a preacher gets up and starts preaching 
and he's not on track with the Word of God, the Holy Spirit's going to start telling you he's lying. Mm -hmm. He's going to tell you. You know that by knowing the Word of God. The Bible says, hide the Word of God in your heart that you said not against me. Put it in your heart then you know what it is. How do we know? By knowing the Word of God. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and mm -hmm. vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments or the basic teaching of the world, and not after Christ. How many people, there are so many motivational people in ministry preaching, you can go in and they can pump you up. I call, we used to have when I was in school, I guess to do, we called them pep rallies. Had a football game, a whole school get together, get to everybody fired up for the football game or whatever. They get them all pepped up. And you got motivational speakers going around calling themselves preachers, come in here and get you just as happy as you can be. And the next day it's all gone. You get the Holy Spirit in you, you get filled with the Spirit, it don't walk away overnight. It's uh, But beware lest any man spoil you with philosophy or tradition, tradition of man, or rudiments, the teaching of the world, what the world wants to teach you. Verse 9 it says, For in Him, Christ Jesus, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He's the head of the church. We're the body of the church. Everything we need in our Savior. We, and if we know all that, we need to know about our salvation is through the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the only way. All the fullness of that is in Christ Jesus. He's the head of the church. We're the body of the church. We grow together. We work together. Anything that goes against that it's false. It's fake. How do you know? You know the Word of God. I heard somebody talk about, uh, we've all heard of counterfeit money. We've seen, I mean, I, I thought about this. I used to work at flea markets years ago. And people would make false or fake pocketbooks, fake clothes that, that you buy in belts and in stores. I've seen them get busted in the flea market. FBI come in and get them for uh, doing this. Hey, uh, I can't remember. Some of y'all ladies know Denny Rourke or some kind of pocketbooks was one of the big things. They made pocketbooks that look just like what you buy at Belts, but they were fake. They were made overseas, and they were selling. And they got the FBI came in and got them for uh, doing that for trade. But how they knew they was fake, people bought them didn't know it. They thought they was getting the real thing. But when the FBI agent come in. They looked at them. They knew what the real thing looked like. They knew what it was made of. They knew everything about it. They could tell it was fake. I did t-shirts. They would look at my shirt to make sure I wasn't using somebody else's designs and all. They knew what the original looked like. That's the same thing in the Department of Treasury. You get a counterfeit bill, those people that inspect them are a lot of detectives that do that. They know what the paper feels like. They know what kind of ink they got. They know every mark on a $20 bill, and they can take one that's fake and find one little dot, one little dot. It's not that. You know how they do it? Because they know what the real thing is. If you know what the real word, what the Word of God, and what Jesus Christ, the Gospel of God, you'll know when somebody's trying to teach you something wrong. Amen. By knowing the Word. There's many false teachers. They're seeking fame. They're seeking fortune at the cost of Jesus Christ. Is that, I mean, that's just, this, this just bothers me. Using ministry to glorify themselves. I'm not calling names. Y'all know so. Some of y'all might watch them. Some of y'all might be a part of their ministry. I don't know. I hope not. They glorify themselves. It's all about them. And they use Jesus in the background to do what they do. You buy their books. You buy their CDs. They even got hangers you know, they've been to the Holy Land, get this hands, it comes from where Jesus was, and you'll get blessings. That's all a lie. That's not in the Bible. None of that's real. But they glorify themselves. If you know the Word of God, and you're in the family of God, and you have the Holy Spirit in you to teach you and to warn you, you'll know. You'll know when somebody's trying to teach you something that's wrong. Uh, Luke told the church in the book of Acts, chapter 20 and 29 and 30, that there'll be wolves in her then. There'll be wolves in her then. You know the Bible talks about wolves in sheep's clothes and says there'll be wolves in her in to pervert the doctrine to draw men after them. After them. 
one of the things that I do, whether I'm preaching, playing my guitar, singing, or we're doing this, it's all about Jesus. Charlie it, it does the same thing. We try to we try to be careful with who sings up here. We don't want it to be about them. We want it to be about Jesus. Amen. Sometimes we have a visitor come in or something, and it's kind of you know they want to sing and just have opportunity to sing. We try to make sure it's important people to Jesus. It's not about me. It's about that cross and the Savior that died on it. Amen. That's why it's important for the believer to know the Word of God. To know the real thing. If you don't know the real thing and you don't know the Bible, you'll believe anything. You'll believe anything. Yeah. And there's so many people out there confused and deceived. So the Bible says that the devil is a liar. Jesus said you're a liar and the father of it. You don't want to start it. He's also the deceiver. Some of y'all sitting in there tonight says the Beth was deceived for a long Some of y'all been deceived. Mark was too. Some people have been deceived. Some people thought they were saved and they wasn't. Some people think they're doing good with the Lord and they're not because the devil will deceive you. He will have you so confused. If you know the truth, he can't do that. You have to know the truth. There's so many counterfeit gospels or religions out there that, that just, they're deceiving. It's the devil and his demons. They're just, that's why this world's in the shape it's in. Everybody that says they're Christians, everybody that says they're believers, they don't believe the gospel, the doctrine of Jesus Christ. They may believe in Jesus. There is a Jesus. Yes, sir, I believe it. You know, the devil believed it too and trembled. Right. There's a difference between believing and knowing right here and getting it in your heart. Amen. When it comes to your heart, it's a personal relationship. He's your friend. He's with you. He says he's a friend that stick closer than a brother. That's why the Word of God is so important for us to read to study and to meditate. The more of it we know, the more we can fight off all the false teaching and the things. Even our friends. You know, I've got friends now. They'll hear somebody. When they tell me the name where they heard it, my ear just goes numb. They'll say, I heard so and so the other day talking about this. What do you think? I said, Who'd you hear? And they'll tell me, and as soon as they do it, a red flag falls up. But I don't believe half what to say. And they'll tell me, and sometimes it's true with the Word of God, but they teach other things too, and I warn them, you need to be careful listening to this guy. I mean, that's my job to warn y'all. I'll, I'll tell you, I'm going to go up here and call names, but if you come to me and you listen to somebody and you don't know, if I know anything about them, I'll warn you about a false teacher. That's what Paul done. That's what, that's what all of them done. And there's so many, so many false teachers and religions out here that I, the Word, meditate on it day and night. Hide it in your heart that you don't sin against God. This right here is the truth. This past couple of years, we've all got into the thing with the news of COVID virus and political the election and all the different things. We, we don't know who to believe no more. You know, people watched ABC, then CBS, and CNN, then, then Fox News. Now there's a new one, now there's another new one. Now you got the internet and there's 400 different news things on there. I don't know if any of them tell the truth or not. I quit watching them and listening to them. I got tired of them. I know that right there is the truth. Amen. Amen. I know it because I can tell you what God done to me. Amen. How He saved me, how He's changed me, how He's made a preacher out of me, how He's blessed my family. I, I can sit up here and testify all night of the good things Jesus Christ has done for me. And I know it's real. I don't know all this book. Some of y'all in here know more of it than I do. But the more I know, the more I can fight off them fiery darts that other people trying to teach me this and that and the traditions. You know, things are funny. We, somebody in there was talking about chicken the other day. Now, this, this is funny, but it's serious. When I think that was me and daughters talking about chicken last week. I grew up, my dad was a lay minister in a Baptist church. I grew up in a Baptist church. Went to church every Sunday. I told him I was a drug kid. I was a drug Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, whether I wanted to go or not. I went to church. Well, my dad, a lot of Sundays, the pastor or a visiting preacher, somebody come to our house and eat. Every Sunday we had fried chicken. I didn't know for a long time that we were poor and chicken was cheap. So that's why we had fried chicken every Sunday. 
I thought it was a Baptist thing. I thought because I was a Baptist, I had to eat fried chicken on Sunday. Well, you think about it. There's a lot of tradition. You've got to wear a dress down to your ankles. You've got to wear a white shirt and black tie. Some of them, Miss Jean was telling me, some of them is already talking about you've got to show your vaccination card before you can come in our church. Oh, that's none of that's in this book. That's tradition. That's somebody teaching something. Not, they may not mean to do that. Uh, you get a lot of things when it talks about modest apparel in the Bible, different preachers, God didn't tell us different things to us. But there's a lot of things in the Bible, a lot of things in church that's not in the Bible that you have to do. That's, as I look back, I used to be like that. I put my shirt down in the night. I may wear my suit Father's Day. I may look like a preacher. My dad, if he saw me up here in this pulpit with my shirt tailed out to his ears, he'd be very upset. Sometimes I get up here and forget to put it in and I'll preach and it don't affect my preaching. But a lot of those things that we were taught and we learned. And there's nothing wrong with that. One of the things that I heard, I heard a pastor tell this one day, the dressing is, in churches has changed. If a pastor requires you to dress a certain way, that's your pastor. You do what he tells you to do. I say come in here and let's worship God. Uh, you wear your overalls, your blue jeans, your suit, whatever you want to wear, we're here to worship God. Cover up, dress modest, and come to church. I heard a preacher tell this one day. They, they got a new youth pastor. Their church had a dress code. And everybody in the ministry had to wear coat and ties. They got a new youth pastor in the church. And he came and he wore a suit or coat and tie. And he came to the pastor. They had a meeting one day. And he came before the pastor of the church. They said, Pastor, he said, I think if you let me change the way I dress, I can relate to our young people more because they don't dress like this anymore. And when they look at me, they look more to me like the pastor of the church. And if I could just wear some casual clothes, I think they would accept me more and I'd be able to reach them with the Word of God more. And the pastor said, he asked this young pastor, youth pastor, he said, I want to ask you this, young man. He said, if you was going to see the President of the United States today, would you not put on your suit and tie and dress the best you could? And that young man broke that preacher's heart. He said, not if he was my daddy. That preacher said, you just dress up how you want to from now on. He come in with a shirt down and youth started accepting People started getting saved, some of the teenagers. But he said, not if he was my dad, if he was my father. Uh, that's up to God. I, I, I'm not, I don't know how I got off on that. But what I'm saying, some churches teach you got to dress this way, you got to do this way, you got to... If it don't go along with the Bible, it's false teaching. Any way you want to look at it. Uh, that's why we need to know the Word of God, that we can do that. If we know the truth, if you want to be free from all this stuff, those people, I was amazed when we were cleaning this building up, getting ready for church. I had people stop here and talk to me. And they would ask me about this church. You know, they'd say, well, how do you have to dress to come here? Do you have to wear a dress? I said, no, ma'am, you just cover up and come. You're welcome. I had men, do you have to wear a coat and tie to come to this church? How, what kind of church is it going to be? I said, just wear modest clothes. You don't have, I'm not telling you what you wear. You wear what you want to. You come as you are. That's what I've told people. That's what we do. I'm not against you wearing a suit and a long dress. I'm not saying that. But you don't have to. But some churches... See, that's been taught so much. When God changed me, I used to dress like that. I used to wear a tie every time I went to church. I did. I went out visiting. When I went to Baptist Church, I did a lot of visitation, soul winning. And we'd visit, and maybe if I come to your house, I'd say, okay, we won't invite you to church. The cat says, I don't have anything I can wear, not the church. Because used to, you had to wear a nice clothes and dress up to go. And as, as I grew older and God started dealing with me about ministry, I started seeing that's run a bunch of people away from church. They may have come to church if the church had let them come in their old blue jeans. When they got off at the mill, they'd come on to church. But they didn't have nothing nice enough to wear to church. And God started dealing with me about that. Then I worked with the teenagers. 
and Carly was there. She, she was in the youth. We would get kids, never 16 year old kids, never been in a church in their life. I was tickled to death that we got them to come to church. And then the teachers would come to me after church and say, Look, if you go going to bring these kids, you tell me they can't wear these CDC shirts or Gun and Roses or all that. I said, I'm just bringing them to church. God will straighten them up. If they get with God, He'll change all that. But you got people, you know, that's that's not in the Bible. Uh, I didn't like them wearing it either. But I wasn't going to say you can't come to church. That might have been the night one of them teenagers could have got saved. Uh, uh, but you got churches teaching. If you want to get away from that, know the truth. Know the Word of God. When somebody tells you something or teaches you something, if they can't back it up in the Word of God, don't go for it. To know the truth. If you want to be free from the torment of the world, you need to know Jesus first. You need to be born again, for He is the way, the truth, and the life. And He says, No man come to the Father. None of them. There's no other way. I, I, I've heard, I'm not going to call names, I've heard two people this week say there's other ways, and there's no other way to go to heaven but by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Right. You need to know Jesus and you need to know the Word of God. John 8, 32 says, You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. It will not only make you free from sin. See, when we get saved, we're free from the bondage of sin. Sin don't have dominion over me. I still mess up with sin. But sin don't have dominion over me no more. I'm forgiven. I live under grace. And another thing that when you get into that, a lot of people think they got grace, they can just go and live any way they want to. That's another false doctrine that's being taught. You're to live according you're to live. I'll make it real simple. If you're born again, the Bible says we're going to be like him one day. And what we need to be doing now is practicing being like Jesus. Amen. Right Amen. here. Yes. Be ye holy for I am holy. That's what the Father said. We think we can get saved and go to the beer joint and get drunk on Friday come to church on Sunday and some say that's okay because you're under the blood. That's a lie. That's right. right. That's not being obedient. It says be doer of the word, not hearer only. The Bible says to turn away from I'm going to preach on this again next week. I couldn't get it all in tonight. The Bible says don't have nothing to do with them people. They tell you that. Don't have nothing to do if they teach you that. Don't even bid them Godspeed. Turn away from them. Shun them. Run them off. Reprove them. Be rebuke them. But if you know the truth, you want to know how, to, how not to be tangled up in all this crazy stuff. You can do this. You can't do that. You can. You got to do this, but you can't do that. The do's and the don'ts. Get in the book. It tells you everything you can do, everything you shouldn't do. And with the power of God, if you're born again, you know, you say, how do you do all that? How do you do all that? I do it by the power of God. That You know, here, here's the thing. Paul said that he, he had liberty. I can do anything I want to. I'm born again. I'm going to heaven. Amen. The Bible teaches ain't nothing to take that away from me. I can go get drunk. I'm still going to go to heaven. According to the Word of God. But if I do that all the time, if that's a habit of mine, I probably ain't born again. I probably don't belong to God. Because God freed me from that. He took that away from me. I have no desire to do it. And people that go back in their sinful life and they say, I'm saved. I'm going to go to heaven. It's okay. I'm going to go to heaven. They don't never go to church. They don't never worship. But I've got friends. Y'all got them too. You talk to them, try to get them to come to church, tell them about Jesus. Oh, I believe, I believe. And you know them, just like I know mine. They don't live for the Lord. The Bible says, by their fruits, you will know them. By their fruits. What kind of fruit do they produce? The ones I'm talking about don't produce none. They rot apples. My thing is, and I'm not judging that between them and God, I don't believe you're saved in the first place. If you're saved, you're going to live right. You're going to do the best you can. He said, well, I just can't do it. I've got habits I can't break. That's why you need Jesus. That's why you need Jesus. If you could have done it on your own, he wouldn't have to die on the cross for you. I, one of my things, Miss Jerry, I shared this for her a year or so ago. She had a thing about forgiving. 
uh, one another. You know, it's hard. It's, I, I know a preacher, and it amazes me. I know a preacher in Gaffey, South Carolina. His dad left when he was a kid. And he says he'll never forgive him. He's pastoring the church, doing good. I don't see how, if I couldn't forgive people, I couldn't stand up here and tell you the Bible says if you don't forgive others, he won't forgive you. That's what the Bible says. This young man's a pastor in the church and he can't forgive his dad for leaving him when he's a kid. I don't understand that. But I had a situation. I needed to forgive somebody. And it was hard. But I was saved. Christ is in me. The Holy Spirit's in me. I prayed. I said, Lord, I'll go do this, but you've got to help me. I can't do it. The next day I was there. It was settled. It was through the power of God, through Jesus, through the Holy Spirit. It took, I shared that with Miss Jerry. She was having the She did the same thing. Sometimes you just can't say I'm sorry, but my Bible says I can do all things. I can forgive somebody that hates me, that's done me wrong. I can do anything that I have to do as long as it's in the will of God by the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's how I do what I do. And people that teach you, well, you don't have to forgive them. Yeah, that's another thing. You just, you just go on with it. It'll be all right. The Bible says forgive others. Yeah. I mean, we, I can preach all night on this stuff right here. There are so many things out there that's not true. Teachers are teaching, the radio's teaching, the internet's teaching, <coughs> the television's teaching. If you want to know for sure, know the Word of God. That's why it's so important. I preach, I, I preach the Word of God. I don't use books. I use the book. Charlie teaches. Y'all, some of y'all come on Sunday night. That's why it's so important. The Bible study here on Sunday night is just as important as the Sunday morning service. Amen. The more Bible you learn, the better life you're going to have while you're here, Amen. and the truth you're going to know when somebody tries, when the devil sends somebody to trip you up and teach you something that's not from God. Amen. If you don't know the truth, it's just like I said that the. the the trade, if you don't know what a real $20 bill is, somebody hands you a faking, and you'll think you got a $20 bill in your hand. Know the truth. Know the truth. The truth will make you free. Amen. It'll make you free. You know, we, we talk about all the things we go through, and we worry and we doubt, and the past year, and I fell right into it. I'll, I'll give him a testimony here that night that the Lord broke me down the middle of the night. <coughs> A lot of us didn't know enough of the Word of God to get through the pandemic. Right. We, we slipped up, we stumbled. I did. I, I'm admitting it right up here. If we'd have known more, if I'd have known more, I wouldn't have fell through like I did. We need to know the Word of God. We need to hide it in our heart. We need to know what thus saith the Lord. If the Lord don't come back, if, if, if He don't call the church home, things here are going to get worse. Yeah. That's a known fact. According to Scripture, things are going to get worse. The more of the Word of God we know, the better off we'll be. Amen. Because we, we don't know who to believe no more. Right. You can't trust nobody exactly hardly right. anymore. I mean, Vern, they shared their testimony about breaking down. That was a miracle that that man of God stopped. That, that could have been somebody to rob them. Yeah. Kill them. Mm -hmm. you, you never know no more. I mean, it's just... Uh, it's like the Rock Hill thing that my daughter was talking about. The football players walked up and shot all those people. Two children, two guys working on an air conditioner. Uh, they just had a high school shooting in Tennessee. I mean, things, are, it's just, it's there. And those people doing that, uh, they don't know the truth. If they did, they wouldn't be doing those things. They wouldn't be doing those things. We have uh, this Tell me, Jean showed about her nephew. If that young man would have known the truth, he probably wouldn't be dead today. He, he probably wouldn't be dead today. He's been to places, people trying to help him, and if they weren't sharing the Word of God and the truth. And we know, most people in here know the truth. We need to be telling them people don't know anything about him. I mean, some of y'all know a lot more Bible than I do. Some of y'all don't. But whatever you know, we need to be teaching them people don't know nothing. Teach our children. We're trying to teach our grandchildren back there. I try to, every time I'm with them, I try to 
encourage them somewhere and get something about the Lord brought up so I can teach you. You know, the Bible says to teach them everywhere you at. The old Father's Day, that'll come out. Teach your children when you're walking with them by the road, wherever you're at. Now it's like driving in the car, whatever you're doing. Always teaching them. Teaching your children about God because ain't nobody else going to teach them. All right. Ain't nobody else going to teach them. We need to teach them. The church does. I pray God will help us start to get a children's ministry going in this. Some of these children in case are in here to teach them the Word of God. So many people out there that don't know the truth. A lot of parents, you know, the generations down below, mine have fallen away from church. Church is at the lowest thing. I just got a thing the other day. It's at the lowest it's ever been. Less than 48% of in the country even say they go to church anymore. That's less than half the people in the United States are affiliated with the church. That's to so who's teaching those people's children. And what they've learned, if it's not the truth, they're just teaching them whatever they've heard is what's going on. So we need to pray. Come here, how you doing? We need to pray for our nation. We need to pray that we'll pray for one another. Maybe call each other up, you know, about the Bible. If you got questions, call me. I'll try to help you. Hide the Bible. Hide the Word of God in your heart. Meditate on it day and night. Study it. You know, you used to I had people call me. We'd have Bible study, and I had people call me at home. or call Charlie. We'd talk about it. Call and have questions about what we told or what we had. I would say, just get in the Word of God. Hide it in your heart. Know the truth. That way you know when somebody's telling you a lie. Don't be deceived by false doctrine. That, Paul preached about that more than anything in the Bible, probably. And it's worse now than it's ever been. Yeah. People teaching things that's not in the Bible. Yeah. Amen. Anybody?